Number 12. Underwater Buddha Statue Renovation works often reveal long-forgotten objects, but workers in the Jiangxi province couldn't have possibly expected to find something of such significance as they began construction of a hydropower gate on a reservoir. The work caused the water levels in the area to fall, which revealed a 600-year-old Buddha statue looking peacefully out. It's thought that the statue dates back to the Ming Dynasty or maybe even earlier. What's more, it was just the first sign of archaeological significance there, because the base of an ancient temple was also found under the water. Archaeologists found that the reservoir had been built on the ruins of an ancient town called Xiaoxi, meaning that all the treasures that were too large to move were flooded. Surprisingly, the presence of water is thought to have helped preserve the Buddha, which is why it looks in such great condition, even though it's been there for more than six centuries. Number 11. Ancient Chinese Tomb In the northern Shanxi province of China, a mysterious tomb has been discovered, built of brick and stone, that dates back over 800 years. The tomb itself was discovered near the office building of a metal company when they decided to do a renovation project. They were shocked to find an absolutely massive underground burial hidden beneath the concrete. Researchers evaluated the tomb to be from the Jin Dynasty, sometime between 960 and 1234 AD. How exactly it got covered up by concrete when the city was being built is quite frankly boggling. It was literally inches beneath the ground. People must have been walking over the tomb for nearly a thousand years without ever taking notice. The researchers aren't sure who was buried here. Hao Xiaoqiao with the Tourism Bureau said it may have been a couple's joint tomb, though who they were is anybody's guess. Number 10. Tools Rewrite Human History It's pretty incredible to think that no matter how far we come in the fields of science and technology, the world is still full of secrets and splendor left to be found. This is the case when it comes to human history, and the Philippines may have held a special key to rewriting it. There were stone tools found there that predate the arrival of modern humans to the islands by around 600,000 years. Near the tools were the remains of carved bones, most likely between 631,000 and 777,000 years old. Before this discovery, the earliest evidence of ancient humans was found in Luzon's Kaliao Cave, and it was a 67,000-year-old foot bone. It means that the occupation of an ancient species of human to the Philippines was much earlier than originally believed. It was thought that humans didn't cross to the islands because they weren't sure how to get across such an expansive ocean. But it turns out that ancient humans were able to make significant deep sea crossings much sooner than originally believed. Number 9. Nomad's Shield an incredible shield that once belonged to a nomadic warrior has been found by archaeologists in China's Xinjiang region, which they say is over 3,000 years old. This is actually a pretty mysterious part of China, bordering closely with Mongolia. The nomad's shield was found by the Huahaizhe Lake in the Altai Mountains, a place where archaeologists once found what they think is the largest temple ever dedicated to the sun in the Eurasian steppe. The stone shield itself is shaped kind of like a pentagon and was used during the Bronze Age by ancient nomads for ritual sacrifice ceremonies. Associate researcher with the Chinese Academy of Social Scientists, Guo Wu, said the shield was a ritual object intended to drive out evil spirits. The nomads at the time were focused primarily on shamanism as their religion. In order to bless the shield, turning it into a magical totem to ward off away evil spirits, somebody probably had to be sacrificed and the shield blessed by a shaman. However, the specific details of the ritual are still unknown to scientists. Number 8. Sokka Warrior Relics Golden objects were recently uncovered from ancient burial mounds that were created by the Sokka warriors of Central Asia, a group of people who lived from between the 8th century BC to the 3rd century BC. Hundreds of amazing gold artifacts were taken from dozens of burial mounds throughout the Kazakhstan wasteland. 
One of the burial plots even belonged to a teenage archer who was buried with a small collection of golden objects and a young female who was found to be a relative. His tomb was found completely intact, which shocked archaeologists because most of the tombs had already been pillaged by grave robbers centuries ago. The Saka people themselves are some of the most fascinating anywhere in Asia. They were known to be fearsome warriors and skilled artisans. They created intricate objects out of gold and fought other nomadic tribes in the region. They were ultimately wiped out about 2,000 years ago, with very little remaining of their legacy today, except for what's been found in the burial mounds of their most prominent warriors. Number 7. Imperial Worship Archaeologists in China have excavated an imperial worship site that was built over 1,500 years ago. This was during the Northern Wei Dynasty of between 386 and 534 AD. It's the first time that archaeologists have located such a site, which they say was probably used in the worshipping of heaven itself. Historical records even show that the Emperor Xiao Wen visited this place to conduct a ceremony in 494 AD before he relocated his state capital. But what was heaven worship for the ancient Chinese? Its history goes back to the Qiao Dynasty of 1046 BC. It was a key ceremony for emperors to pay tribute to heaven in hopes that they would get good weather the following year. They didn't have quite as complicated a system of beliefs as some other ancient civilizations. They simply requested that heaven, which ruled over earth, would provide them a good harvest. Heaven worship went on for 3,000 years before the government of the Republic of China banned such ceremonies in 1914. Number 6. World's Earliest Coin The oldest coins ever minted in human history were just found in China in 2021. This discovery shocked the entire scientific community. The coins found date back to at least 2640 years. They are known as spade coins, crafted in what is today the Henan province. Archaeologists also found the production site where the coins were minted, part of an industrial foundry active during the Eastern Chao period between 770 and 220 BC. Before this amazing discovery, the oldest coins ever found were unearthed in Turkey, thought to be just a few years younger than these ones. The Chinese spade coins were shaped kind of like the head of a shovel with a hollow socket in the middle. Characters were written on the coins to mark how much they were worth. There were a few different versions of these coins that circulated throughout China until 221 BC when they were outlawed by the first emperor of Qin. Unfortunately, nobody knows just how widespread the use of these coins was. The city in which the artifacts were found was established in the year 800 BC and then abandoned less than 400 years later. The coins may only have been in production for a short period before they grew out of style. Do you like old coins? Do people still collect coins these days? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 5. Ancient Idol An ancient sculpture over 1,200 years old was just found in a riverbed in India by the police. According to the local officials, miners in the area were digging up the riverbed when they stumbled upon the artifact and called the authorities. It's believed that the sculpture represents the goddess Durga, known as the mother of the Hindu universe. She goes by other names too, such as Shakti or Devi. She is one of the most popular Hindu goddesses, seen as the protector of all that is good in the physical world. She does battle with the forces of evil and is often depicted standing atop a lion or tiger. Nobody knows exactly where the statue came from or how it ended up on the bottom of the river. It's been dated back to the 7th century, to a time when thousands of Hindu temples were being erected all across the country. This very statue may have been pillaged from one of the nearby temples, then discarded in the river and lost for centuries. Number 4. Noyon Mountain Burial The Xiongnu Empire was at one point the most powerful empire anywhere in Asia. 
The Xiongnu people were the ancient ancestors of the Mongols and predate the Mongol Empire as the first great civilization in the grasslands of Central Asia. These people occupied a massive stretch of territory going all the way from Manchuria to the Altai Mountains, even as far as Lake Baikal in Siberia. They controlled many parts of the Silk Road and interacted with the more famous Han Dynasty. Before the Xiongnu Empire fell apart and then reformed as the Mongol Empire, they left behind at least 5,000 tombs across Mongolia, China, and Russia. It's important to remember at this point that Russia is a little bit European and a little bit Asian. The European part of Russia is Moscow, while in the Far East, in Siberia, the heritage is almost entirely Asian. In any case, many of the amazing tombs of the Xiongnu elite have been uncovered by archaeologists. The most famous is the Noyon Mountain burial site found in 1912. It's here where the deepest of all the elite tombs is, going nearly 60 feet down in the earth. The walls of the tombs at this site were found covered in felt rugs with coffins adorned with silk and fancy textiles. Rather than funerary objects dedicated to obscure gods, most of the artifacts found inside the tombs are representations of the sun and the moon. Number 3. Ancient Bones Newly discovered bones of a person who died 40,000 years ago have revealed some secrets of Asia's distant history. To understand the discovery a bit better, keep in mind that humans left Africa and spread into Eurasia 60,000 years ago. After this, humans fanned out pretty much everywhere, but the story of how humans ended up in East Asia, meaning places like Japan, Korea, and Taiwan, is still a bit foggy. Nobody knows who settled which region first or how exactly the different civilizations structured themselves in the very beginning. Dr. Chao Mei Fu at the Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology in Beijing is trying to make sense of this ancient history. Members of her team recently extracted and sequenced the DNA of someone called the Tianyan Man. This guy died 40,000 years ago in what is now Western Beijing. He's considered to be one of the earliest human beings ever found in East Asia. After taking a close look at his DNA, scientists discovered that no human alive today shares the same genetic makeup as him. As you can imagine, these results have stirred up quite a bit of confusion. Scientists don't understand how his genes have vanished from human society. The best guess is that the DNA of early hunter-gatherers was diluted during mass migration to and from the area, with the more prominent genes of the natives in Southeast Asia eventually becoming dominant. Number 2. T-Rex Bird In China, researchers discovered the fossil of an ancient bird that shares a shocking similarity with the Tyrannosaurus rex. The discovery was made by researchers working with the Chinese Academy of Sciences. The fossil dates back to 120 million years, back to when this small extinct bird once flapped around with the dinosaurs. The bird was so small that it could easily fit in the palm of a person's hand. The reason it's so unique is that its skull looks almost identical to that of a T-Rex, just quite a bit smaller. By reconstructing the skeleton of the dead bird, researchers were able to determine that the earliest bird to ever take flight inherited many of their features from their dinosaur ancestors. However, what scientists can't figure out is how a giant T-Rex ended up slowly evolving into what was basically a predatory hummingbird. Number 1. Ancient Skeletons Giants have been found in China. Archaeologists recently uncovered the skeletons of people who were unusually tall and unusually powerful. The skeletons date back 5,000 years and were pulled out of the ground at a gravesite in the Shandong province. One of the giants measured 6 feet 2 inches. This may not sound like a lot, especially not to anyone who's ever watched the basketball game, but it is a shocking height for 5,000 years ago. Back then, 
people were closer to being 5 feet tall. Plus, the average man in China today is only 5 feet 6 inches tall, a full 6 inches shorter than the ancient giants. Nobody knows exactly who these people were, but archaeologists noted they were buried in larger tombs than ordinary people. The reason was probably that they had a very high status in society, which could have been because of their incredible height. It's unclear what made a random group of people significantly taller than everyone else around them, although that tallness persists today. A study in 2015 showed that the people living in the Shandong province are still slightly taller than the rest of the people in China. As of right now, nobody has any idea why. Number 8. Foot Cult An obscure Japanese cult, Onohana Sampogyo, was started by a man named Teriyoshi Fukunaga, who believed he was not only the reincarnation of Jesus Christ, but also Buddha. Using this so-called persona to his own benefit, Fukunaga started a cult, but it was one that wasn't exactly run-of-the-mill. Instead of reading the palms of his believers, Fukunaga read the soles of people's feet, telling them things such as whether they had a serious illness or would suffer misfortune. Fukunaga would direct the unsuspecting person to attend an expensive training session where they were expected to purchase high-priced scrolls and other ornaments to protect them. Costing tens of thousands of dollars, the scrolls reportedly warded off evil, broke curses, and delivered the owners from sin. But fraud wasn't the only thing Fukunaga was eventually accused of. Four members of the Honohana cult died during training with one of the men reportedly falling from a second-floor window during a five-day training session at the cult. Shockingly, that wasn't the only time the fire department had to attend the headquarters of the cult for such an incident. In fact, they were called there a dozen times to deal with similar tragedies. When Fukunaga was taken to court, he claimed he hadn't harmed anyone and only delivered the voice of God to his followers. The judge disagreed, though, and charged the cult leader with fraud wielding the power as the leader of the cult to con his followers out of around $1.5 billion. So, why were so many people duped? Apparently in Japan, generations believed their jobs and livelihoods were secure. When they suffered a financial downfall, they looked for spiritual guidance. And sadly, men such as Fukunaga preyed on their desperation. Number 7. Movement for the Restoration of the Ten Commandments of God a fringe Catholic group known as the Movement for the Restoration of the Ten Commandments of God, established in Uganda, became more well-known after the discovery of mass graves in the year 2000. 153 bodies were found in a mass grave, with all victims, including 59 children, suffering from strangulation or suffocation. Discovered in Kalinga village, 30 miles from the sect's headquarters, where an additional 300 to 500 people died in a church fire the previous week. Sadly, the number of deaths is only an estimate, with the bodies burned beyond recognition. The group was established at the time when there was a rash of reported apparitions of the Virgin Mary and Jesus in Catholic churches in Africa. A number of seers, people who claimed they could see these apparitions, joined together with the so-called Twelve Apostles falling under the rule of the leader Joseph Kibwetere, who claimed to have received religious visions since the 1980s. Over time, their numbers grew to over 5,000, with the members taking a vow of silence and developing a special sign language to communicate. They also predicted the end of the world would come in 1999, but when it didn't come to pass, some of the members who asked for their contributions money to be returned were accused of being traitors, killed and buried in mass graves. Soon after, Kibuteri spread the word that on March 17th, the Virgin Mary would be coming. Apparently, it was his way of hiding the suicide plan, with only some knowing the plan, while others did not expect to die. After the tragic fire, authorities tried to identify the victims, but since Kibuteri and the other leaders didn't have any records, no one knows whether they died in the fire or escaped with some of the movement's money. With so many not only taken advantage of, but murdered by the sex leaders, 
the death toll was second only to the mass suicide at the Jonestown cult in 1978. Number 6. The Creativity Movement Formed in 1973, a religious organization known as the Creativity Movement operates out of the United States. It was founded by a man named Ben Classen under the name Church of the Creator, with beliefs that revolved around the white race as being superior and sacred above all others. It's not difficult to see how the fascist group became so hated. They considered Jews and other ethnic groups as subhuman. They were also known for committing violent hate crimes, as well as plotting to bomb a black church in LA and assassinate Rodney King. The organization flailed as lawsuits for their vile exploits dug them, resulting in the leader dying after swallowing four bottles of sleeping pills. Under various other leaders, including Matt Hale, who was later convicted of soliciting the murder of a federal judge, the group grew to 88 chapters by the early 2000s. But after multiple instances of infighting and even informants giving the FBI inside information, the group collapsed with only two chapters remaining the following year. The group has tried to rebuild in more recent years, but with so much inner turmoil, the group, thankfully, isn't as unified as it once was. Number 5. Aum Shinrikyo When a sarin attack occurred in Tokyo in 1995, unsuspecting commuters probably didn't think they'd come face to face with a cult. Members of a doomsday cult had left five bags filled with liquid nerve agent on board, resulting in passengers suffering from stinging fumes, which later turned into choking, vomiting, blindness, and paralysis. At least 5,800 people were injured and 13 people died after the attacks, which had been coordinated between the three train lines in five separate incidents. What's most terrifying about the attack is that it only took a matter of seconds for the nerve gas to begin poisoning people. The culprit was an obscure religious group known as Aum Shinrikyo. Believing the end of the world was coming, they concocted the coordinated attacks. Originating in the 1980s as a spiritual group who followed both Hindu and Buddhist beliefs, the group was led by Shogo Asahara who declared he was both Christ and the first enlightened one since Buddha. With tens of thousands of followers worldwide, Asahara was making a lot of money, urging followers to reject materialism while also paying handsome sums of money for blood initiations and rituals involving leaders' hair and bathwater. Of course, things escalated from there. Becoming increasingly violent and kidnapping, injuring and killing opponents, the group soon adopted chemical and biological agents to use, including in the 1995 attack in Tokyo. They even tried to release more nerve agents again in other stations, but luckily, a number of the members not only faced trial, but were also sentenced to death for their atrocities done in the name of a bizarre religion. Number 4. Chen Tao Founded in 1993, a cult by the name of Chen Tao which began in Taiwan, moved to San Dimas, California, and turned into something out of this world. Started by Han Ming Chen, who lost both parents at an early age, the cult was a new age group that began after the leader, Chen, believed to have experienced a revelation from God to pursue a religious life. But it wasn't as straightforward as it sounds. Chen's fascination with UFOs also had a hand in his religious beliefs, Chen believed that God would announce his arrival in the physical world by appearing on television on March 25, 1998, later descending into human form with the physical features of Chen at the cult headquarters. Apparently, he also believed God would be able to replicate himself as many times as he needed to be able to greet everyone there. The cult leader also said that if God didn't appear, he and his followers wouldn't commit suicide. While these outrageous beliefs may seem strange, it has been reported that some of the cult members included doctors, engineers, and teachers. One can't help but wonder why educated people believed a man whose beliefs combined Buddhism, Taoism, ufology, and Taiwanese folk religions and said he could talk to God through a ring on his finger. Even though God didn't appear, Chen continued his ruse offering salvation to those with AIDS and cancer, 
telling them their diseases were spiritual instead of physical. But his tall tales and manipulation seemed to get the better of him, with membership dropping to just a few dozen. Chen was later exiled from the group after he butted heads with other high-ranking members. The group continued on without him though, adopting a more conventional Chinese Buddhist belief system. Number 3. The Family The family is one of the more chilling cults to ever make headlines. With a leader who tricked mothers into thinking they were giving their adopted children to good homes and keeping them for herself, to the harsh treatment of those children by good women known as aunties, the family will send shivers down your spine. Started in Australia by a woman named Anne Hamilton Byrne, the family had hundreds of followers who attended a lodge to worship at her feet. Believing the end of the world was coming, Hamilton Byrne convinced her believers that she was the female reincarnation of Jesus Christ. Under the guise of building a perfect race through a collection of children, Hamilton Byrne forced those children to bleach their hair blonde. She also kept them isolated on her property, homeschooling them and giving them LSD as part of an initiation ritual. The children under her care believed they were brothers and sisters and thought Anne and her husband were their parents until the police descended on the cult to break it up. Living apart from the adult cult members in an isolated compound, the children were put under the care of sadistic aunties who starved them, beat them, and punished them with cold showers, keeping the children frightened for their lives. Like other cults, adult members included seemingly well-educated architects, nurses, and solicitors, which makes one wonder how they were so brainwashed by Hamilton Byrne's bizarre cult. It took a raid in 1987 by police to bring the existence of the family to the world's attention. As news spread about the yoga teacher turned cult leader and her collection of children, the horrific treatment suffered by the children came to light. Prosecutors built the case against the aunties, but because there was no physical evidence or hospital reports of abuse, the women were charged with falsifying government benefits, money they had given to Anne as their leader. But Anne fled and her followers refused to tell authorities where she was hiding. As it turns out, she fled to Upper New York State after being on the run for four years. By the time Anne was caught, she was a frail 71-year-old, later extradited back to Australia, where she and her husband ended up only paying a $5,000 fine each. In the end, her husband died, and Anne ended up in a nursing home with an estate estimated to be worth at least $10 million. Do you know anyone who joined a cult? What happened? Tell us your story in the comment section below. Then remember to subscribe to Taltanic for more intense and bizarre videos just like this one. Number 2. The Matamoros Cult When a group of American drug enforcement officers working with the Mexican Federal Police stopped a car for speeding through a checkpoint near Matamoros, they didn't expect to find a connection to a cult. The year was 1989. After chasing down the runaway car, police found hundreds of pounds of marijuana. After searching the property where the car had stopped, they also found a chilling display in a small shed, candles, an altar, a large cauldron, and other items associated with brujeria, a type of witchcraft practiced in Latin America. After arresting the driver, Hernandez and his brothers, they were taken to the police station. It was then that one of the men recognized a missing person flyer for an American student who happened to disappear without a trace after getting separated from his friends in Matamoros. At the time of his disappearance, Mark Kilroy had been returning home from a spring break trip across the border from Brownsville, Texas. His friends had gone across the International Bridge while Mark stayed behind to use the bathroom, never to return. After looking for their friend to no avail, the boys contacted local authorities who denied Kilroy had even disappeared in Mexico. As for the cult, police eventually learned from the Hernandez brothers that Kilroy had been kidnapped by them and taken to the ranch they'd been arrested at. When the police asked why, the men said El Padrino, or the Godfather, wanted a human to sacrifice. Upon further investigation, police determined El Padrino was a local named Adolfo de Jesus Constanzo who had been raised in the Paolo Mayombe tradition, an Afro-Caribbean religion that had ties to Santeria. They often took part in rituals where animal sacrifice and human bones were used. 
Constanzo eventually ended up at the ranch, where he convinced the Hernandez brothers to participate in his rituals, including human sacrifice. When police raided the compound, they found Kilroy's remains. There were also a number of other bodies buried there, all mutilated in the name of sacrifice for one man's twisted obsession with dark magic. Constanzo fled, but police decided to burn his precious hut and all its sacrificial tools. When Constanzo saw it go up in flames, he went berserk at the apartment he'd been staying at, which alerted police to his whereabouts. After a shootout, the delusional cult leader was dead. Many members of his cult were charged with various crimes, and the Kilroy family finally had some sense of closure. Number 1. The Ant Hill Kids Convinced a war between good and evil was coming, a man named Raj Thero decided to start his own religious group. Basing his beliefs off of teachings of the Seventh-day Adventists, he convinced a group of people to quit their jobs and join his cult, the Ant Hill Kids. Forming a commune, Rosh, who told his group he was Moses, forbade his followers from contacting their families and began drinking heavily. Even though the rules didn't seem to apply to him, Rosh made sure his followers were watched, going so far as forcing them not to speak to one another unless he was present. He took to spying on his followers, and those who weren't devoted enough in his eyes were punished by being whipped with belts or hammers, suspended from the ceiling and having all the hairs in their bodies plucked. As the cult continued to meet, Rush became more and more delusional, believing the world was going to end in 1979. He drove his followers into the Canadian wilderness, convinced God would avoid harming them there. Remaining in the Canadian woods, Thero had 26 children with various women in his cult. He was so delusional that he even abused his own children. One of his unlucky followers, who was subject to horrific physical abuse, finally had enough. After multiple instances of Thero attacking and brutalizing her, she escaped and contacted authorities. When he was in prison, his cellmate, after finding out what Thero did to his followers, lost his temper, took a knife, and killed him, marking a fitting end to a disturbing man's life. Number 10. Musham Castle Musham Castle is considered by some to be the most haunted castle in the entire world. It can be found in Untenberg, Austria, and has close ties to not only witch trials, but werewolf hunts too. The castle was built from the bones of an old Roman fortress in 1191. The history of the castle was pretty boring up until 1520, when it became one of the administrative seats in the region and was then besieged during the German Peasants' War. But it would be in 1675 that the true horror of the castle began. The Salzburg Witch Trials went on between 1675 and 1690, with the sentencing and executions being carried out on the grounds. In total, 139 people were killed during the witch trials. This included 39 children between 10 and 14 who were executed for allegedly practicing witchcraft along with 53 teenagers. One of the stranger things about the trials was that most of the people executed were men. This was unusual for the time, seeing as most witch trials involved burning women. Then there are the werewolf hunts that happened in the late part of the 18th century. It was around 1790 that the castle started to run low on funding and fell into a state of disrepair. Then there were reports of dead animal corpses being found all around the castle grounds. The locals rallied together to hunt down what they assumed was a werewolf. It was just an ordinary wolf, or rather a pack of wolves, but it still stirred up quite a panic. After the villagers hunted down and destroyed their wolf enemies, Musham Castle was abandoned until 1886 when an art patron moved in and started restoring it. Number 9. Creepy Farmhouse An urban explorer made a rather grim discovery in an abandoned farmhouse. He was snooping around a bit when he uncovered what some might call the farmhouse from hell. He got a tip from an explorer friend of his that there was some kind of haunted farmhouse in the region of rural Lincolnshire and that he should check it out. So that's exactly what Daniel Sims did. 
the urban explorer was brave enough to enter the ghoulish farmhouse, at which point he found mannequins in the parlor having a tea party. There were some obscure messages on the walls written in human feces. Daniel even found a creepy diary that detailed every single thing whoever wrote it, ate, and drank. Which is definitely a little weird. Unfortunately, nobody knows who used to live in the farmhouse. Judging by the old decorations and ratty furniture, it probably hasn't been used since the 70s. It's unclear whether any nefarious activities happened here, but hey, you just never know with places like this. Number 8. Bahangar Fort In India, the 17th century Bahangar Fort is considered to be the most haunted site in the whole country. It was built by the ruler of the day, Raja Bahagwant Das. So far as the legend goes, there was a black magician who fell in love with a princess who lived inside the fortress. He tried to use a love potion to make her fall for him. It didn't work. The magician was murdered, and with his last breath, he cursed the fort. Nobody knows exactly when this place was abandoned, but the local residents are positive that it's haunted. It's become such a popular destination for ghost enthusiasts that the Archaeological Survey of India had to put signs prohibiting visitors during the night. Number 7. Abandoned Mansion An abandoned mansion left to rot has revealed its creepy secrets to Colin Smith. Colin was driving home from his job just outside the city of London when he noticed a spooky mansion on the side of the road. He couldn't actually see the mansion from the road. What he saw was the overgrown driveway and it made him curious. Going down the driveway, he came face to face with the creepiest mansion in England. Its windows had been smashed out, its brick facade was peeling and old, and it looked like the perfect place to be murdered by a ghost. Feeling brave, Colin Smith decided to poke around. What he found inside the abandoned property freaked him right out. There were creepy hand-drawn portraits, trash and pieces of rubbish, and ripped open mattresses. A dark basement full of mold and old pieces of furniture, and even a ruined cellar with old bottles of wine. Colin has no idea how long the house has been abandoned or who lived in it. Though, judging by the newspapers left on the floor, it's been empty for at least 30 years. Although some of the newspapers date all the way back to the 1950s. What's your favorite abandoned place? Would you dare spend the night in any of these places? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Number 6. Ghosts of Glamis Castle Glamis Castle is arguably one of the most haunted places in all of Scotland. It was built in the year 1016 to be a royal hunting lodge. Through the ages, it's been passed from one royal Scot to another. It was the home of Lady Elizabeth Bowes Lyon, who you might know as Queen Elizabeth. Princess Margaret was even born inside the castle. It also has a long history of ghosts. There are several creepy specters known to roam around this abandoned castle. One of the apparitions is a tongueless woman who has been spotted by visitors. When witnessed, the ghost is usually pointing to her face as she has blood spilling out of her tongueless mouth. Legend says she was once a maid who found out a secret and had her tongue cut out because of it. Then there's the Grey Lady, said to be the wife of the sixth Lord of Glamis, John Lyon. This woman was accused of practicing witchcraft against the King of Scotland and was burned at the stake in 1537. Today, she's seen frequently haunting the family chapel. Who's up for a trip to Scotland? Let me know in the comments. Number 5. The Stanley Hotel The Stanley Hotel is the most notorious haunted hotel anywhere in America. It was in 1974 when Stephen King stopped here for the night and was inspired to write The Shining, basing the Overlook Hotel on the Stanley Hotel. But long before Stephen King ever showed up, the Stanley Hotel had a reputation as a haunted destination. It was first built in 1909 as a retreat for the elite. Mr. Stanley was the brains behind the design of the hotel, and after his death in 1940, guests continued to see him loitering behind the reception desk as a ghost. There's also said to be a phantom pianist who sometimes fills the music room with piano notes. Great. But the strange occurrences go way beyond just Mr. Stanley's ghost and the mysterious piano woman. Some visitors have spotted shadowy figures lurking in the halls, laughter coming from nowhere, lights flickering, and even objects moving on the road. And it's happened in just about every room in the hotel, making it the ghostliest place anywhere in the United States. 
Would you book a room and spend the night here? Let me know in the comments below. Number 4. Oriental Theater There's no easy way to say it. The Oriental Theater in Chicago is haunted. This place was completed in November of 1903 and advertised as being fireproof. This was despite the captain of the Chicago Fire Department at the time taking a tour of the building and noting his concern. There was a lack of fire extinguishers, there were no sprinklers, and even the water connections were missing. Immediately after the theater opened, a curtain was ignited by a light shorting out. The fire spread through the rest of the stage until it turned into a fireball and flowed into the audience. The fireproof theater caught on fire and 600 people were killed, mostly children who were visiting from school and their mothers. Even as the people tried to flee to the safety of outside, they were hindered by fire exits that didn't exist, locked gates, and doors that jammed from the crowds pressing against them. People were trampled, asphyxiated by the smoke, and burned. The theater did eventually open again in 1926, but the ghosts of the dead souls who burned up in the fire have never left. Every now and again, people performing at the theater witness families dressed in clothes from the early 1900s watching from the crowd, their eyes white and soulless. Number 3. Ancient Ram Inn The Ancient Ram is one of England's weirdest haunted venues. It's been called the most haunted house in Britain. The structure is located in the small village of Warren Under Edge, first constructed in 1145. The inn is rumored to be built on the remains of a pagan burial ground and on the center of ley lines that can be traced all the way to Stonehenge. Paranormal happenings have been going on here for almost 1,000 years. It was used as a home for slaves and masons, it became the home of a mysterious priest, and it had a short run as a public house, what we call today a pub. The place functioned as an inn until 1968 when somebody purchased the property and turned it into their own house. The homeowner was less than thrilled when he began to be haunted. He's made all kinds of outrageous claims since moving into the property. Things like demonic forces terrorizing him at night and pulling him out of his bed. He also claims that by doing his own excavations on the property, he's discovered evidence of devil worship. He claims to have once found the skeleton of a child who he thinks was stabbed to death with daggers. The man lived here until he died in 2017. Since then, the inn has been abandoned. Number 2. Lawang Sewu Lawang Sewu is the most haunted place in all of Indonesia. The name translates to English as a thousand doors. The building doesn't actually have a thousand doors, but it is a pretty massive structure. It was built in 1904 as a colonial-style headquarters for the Indonesian railways at a time when the Dutch were trying to rule the country. It was also used as a military headquarters during World War II. The building was part of the Battle of Semarang, which saw many soldiers tortured and killed. The Japanese took over the building and used its basement to torture prisoners of war. So of course, there have to be ghosts here. This is just terrible. The Japanese soldiers apparently hung people from iron beams and then did terrible things to them until they died. It's said that their souls are still haunting Lawang Sewu to this very day, though the only people who witness them are the tourists crazy enough to venture into this abandoned colonial nightmare. No thanks. Number 1. Port Arthur Penitentiary The Port Arthur Penitentiary on the island of Tasmania is a scary abandoned prison that draws comparisons to Alcatraz in San Francisco. It had a reputation for being inescapable. It began life in 1833 as a prison to house convicts from Britain and Ireland. It was supposed to be the toughest prison in all of Australia. Those who were in prison here were forced to work at the nearby timber station. By the time the prison closed in 1877, somewhere around 1646 people had died here. But the real horror came in 1996 when Martin Bryan walked into the Broad Arrow Cafe and started shooting, killing 12 people and then moving into the gift shop and killing 8 more. Martin then strolled into the parking lot and gunned down more people, ending the day with a total of 35 killed and 23 injured. He was given 35 years without the possibility of parole, but with this heinous act and the disturbing history of the penitentiary, it's become so riddled with ghosts that you'd have a hard time 
not running into one. Would you like to spend the night in any of these haunted places? Let me know in the comments and thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out more of the channel's great videos.